The game of the day was Buffalo and Minnesota. I would say it's one of the craziest last 10 minutes and then overtimes I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic or, you know, be prisoner of the moment. If you watch that game, and I was just sitting on my couch when Josh Allen threw that pick on fourth and two, and th- what happened from then on out was insanity. And I, I want to start with Buffalo because props to Minnesota. They're rolling. That was a really impressive win. Justin Jefferson's like Randy Moss meets Jerry Rice. Dalvin Cook's a stud. Her cousins at, at, at these early kickoffs, y- you never want to screw with him, even though early in the game he was struggling. But let's start with Minnesota. I root for Josh Allen. He, he's a California kid from the Valley. I, I went to Fresno State. We didn't recruit him, but I got family that live in the Valley. My dad was a farmer in that area. I gravitate toward those people. I'm rooting for him to have a lot of success. He doesn't need me to root for him. He's a fantastic player. Sean McDermott's one of the, you know, four or five coaches in the NFL that I can send a text to and get one right back. I root for Sean McDermott. But what I can't argue about both these two guys as a combination is they get a little tight. And, you know, Sean is not a loosey-goosey guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not his personality. Belichick is not a loosey-goosey guy. But it does feel like one thing when you watch Bill or hell, I was watching Brian Dayball today. There's just a, an ease with Brian Dayball on the sideline. Sean is just a tightly wound guy. You know, he's one of those guys getting up at 345 in the morning. He, You know, he, his diet is perfect. It's just he's very, very disciplined. But he's also wound pretty tight. And you feel it with his teams. Like, we've been trying to figure out what, what's up with the Buffalo Bills. When they're on and kicking your ass, they are the best team in the league. But when the game gets close, they kind of crumble. And I do wonder if there's just a tightness with their head coach. And I thought he fucked up the game today because the game would have been over. They were driving with about 10 minutes to go. They're up 10 points. But Minnesota had not been very good on offense. It was an 80-yard touchdown that that gave them an extra seven points. I mean, their offense was, to me, pretty anemic. Dalvin Cook busted a big run, so they got to 17 points. But it wasn't just like 17 points where you're like, yeah, they're going to end up scoring like 28. If I was a betting man at that point in time in the game, I'd been like, at most, they score 20 points. So if you kick a field goal instead of going for it, you go up, it's 27 to 17, you go up 30 to 17, 13 points. And there's about 10 minutes left to go in the game, so you're basically talking three possessions max. Minnesota would have been in major trouble. He decides to go for it. John Harbaugh style, kill shot. Josh Allen, I'm putting this one on him, throws a pick. Then all hell breaks loose. Then they score, then they get the ball back again. They don't score, but then Josh Allen fumbles. But ultimately, like, Sean McDermott made a devastating, uh, just a disastrous decision that unraveled the team. Now, you could argue they still had chances to win. They did. But to me, the game turned and the momentum in the game changed at that decision. And then Josh Allen, what you cannot do late in games, especially when another team has taken momentum, is turn the ball over. I don't have a problem with turnovers in the first quarter, in the second quarter, even in the third quarter. But in a tight game, when you have the lead and the other team is storming back, you cannot throw interceptions. And you can't throw an interception in that spot on fourth and two. He basically gave them the game, gave them the momentum, and then boom, they start you know coming back. Then he fumbles in his own end zone. Like that, that's one of the worst plays I've ever seen. Now he can blame the center. I, I haven't seen the quotes. That that cannot happen. The most basic part of offensive football, the, the starting point for offensive football is the center quarterback exchange. You practice it in peewee football all the way up to the NFL every day to start practice. It's it's the way the sport starts. The center snapping the ball to the quarterback. And when you have a $45 million quarterback, that that is just, it's not acceptable. And that fumble touchdown, you know, obviously gave them, uh, it it gave the Vikings the lead at the time, and he led them on a field goal drive that sent them to overtime. But those two turnovers, I mean, are the only reason you're in fucking overtime. And then the pick at the end of the game. So he basically has two red zone turnovers. The pick at the end of the game that ended the game. The pick with 10 minutes left. And then a red zone turnover in his own red zone that led them to score a touchdown. It, it was, it's Jimmy G level stuff. Like that, that just, that cannot happen for a guy that is that talented. And those two guys, like if you want to win the Super Bowl, and I was thinking this, the biggest difference between McDermott 
and Josh and Andy and Mahomes, there's a looseness to Andy and Mahomes. They don't feel tight in these big spots. They actually feel free. And when you watch McDermott and when you watch Josh and the game gets to nut cutting time and the score is close and it could swing either way, you don't have that much faith that it's going to go well for the Bills. And it's the complete opposite with the Chiefs. Just last week, right, against the Titans, playing like shit all game, 17-9. You're like, oh, they're going to pull something out. And when you watch the Bills, like, they're going to blow this. <laughs> you just keep, they're really going to blow this. You don't say that when it comes to the Chiefs. That doesn't mean it's never happened. It did last year in the AFC Championship game. But to me, the biggest difference is the Bills get tight. And it starts with their head coach, and it starts with their unraveling of their quarterback. You can't turn the ball over like that. And then when you're the head coach, you just see it. Even if you didn't know McDermott, when you're watching, you just, you feel as like, it's like, Sean, you got to take a deep breath, man. The team is feeding off you. And then you feed to your quarterback. And then it all just kind of falls apart. So... That's that's a very, very, very shitty loss if you're the Buffalo Bills. And on the flip side, I didn't think Cousins was playing well. I was taking notes in the first half of the uh, of the morning games, and one of my takes was going to be, you know, I just don't trust Kirk Cousins outside in cold-weather games. Like him indoors. Hell, he even won a playoff game once in a dome. But when it gets cold, when it gets windy, he makes me nervous. I thought he was playing pretty shitty for the majority of the game until Josh Allen threw that pick. And then he flipped a switch. And I thought he was fantastic. He was calm, collected. He kept feeding his horse. I mean, one thing you can't dispute for Minnesota, when he is playing under control and well, they have serious firepower. I mean, Justin Jefferson is one of the best wide receivers, just pure talents we've ever seen. Dalvin Cook is a stud. Thielen is old reliable. Number 17 just makes plays. Like, they got legit firepower. It just starts and ends with Cousins. When Cousins unravels, they have no shot. Because even if Josh Allen is unraveling, he can still make these remarkable plays with his legs or throw a deep bomb. Like, there are limitations to Cousins' physical attributes. And today, I thought the last 10 minutes of the game and then overtime is it, just one of the better Kirk Cousins performances I, I remember. Given it's on the road, hostile environment, it's cold, it's windy, you're playing a good defense, you're losing. And, uh, like, I know the last week it went viral with him in the chain. I thought today was – that was fantastic. It, it really was. And, listen, a lot of people like, Middlecoff, you're going to give them their props. I didn't see this coming. And today, I mean, that's one of the better Minnesota Viking wins, I don't know, the last, like, four or five years. <laughs> I mean, of their good teams in the regular season. That, that, that was a fantastic win because part of it is you're taking the ball away from them. Now, and listen, like, there's some luck involved when Josh Allen fumbles the fucking ball in his own end zone, but you take advantage of it, you fall on the ball. And then uh, Justin Jefferson, the catch he made one-handed, that was sweet. I mean, Justin, it, it's, how much fun is that guy as a player? Same, same with Diggs. I mean, those two guys, they, they mentioned on the broadcast, like, the two-star wide receivers, ironically, who got traded for each other, um, are, are just elite players.